In the last video, we had discussed about the ALU RTL and test bench environment. In this video, I'm going to explain the inducer file functionality followed by the RTL code and the test bench codes. Now coming to this inducer file module, this module operates in the pipeline stage 2 of the processor. This module has 32 general purpose registers which supports synchronous write and asynchronous read operations. These registers are initialized with 0 during the reset operation. The first register is hardware with 0 always so that no write operations are permitted for the first register. With these features let me explain the module port over here. Coming to the input ports, we have clock which is active at POSITCH. Reset is active high asynchronous type. The RS2 address in the register source 2 address. RD address in is a destination register address. Write enable RIN is a write enable signal which will be used during the write operation. RD underscore RIN is basically the data to be written into the destination register. RS1 address in is the register source 1 address. Okay. Now coming to the output ports, we have RS1 out. This is basically the data read during the read operation and this is the source 1 data. And RS2 out is the data read during the read operation and this is the source 2 data. Alright, so these are all about the information about the ports over here. Now let me explain about the RTL code for the same. Here is the RTL code. Now after declaring the module input and output ports as shown over here with proper direction, size and data types, we need to declare a signed fixed size array over here. You can see here that is reg sign 31 down to 0. The variable name is reg underscore file and 31 down to 0. In this fixed size array, the depth is 32 and the width is 32 bits. The signed Keyword has been used here to support to store sign values as well. Apart from this, we also need to declare few neural wires to implement the data forwarding technique for avoiding data hazard using a BIPER strategy. Okay, uh, I have also declared here an integer variable i, which I'm going to use further during the loop iteration process. Now let's see the write operation. Now we all know the write operation is synchronous write. So here we have to use the triggered clock which I have done here using the always process. So always, always at passage of the clock or passage of reset. Then I am using the reset signal to initialize all the registers to zero using a for loop. The loop iterates for 32 times. You can see here in the else if part I am using the condition write enable and I am checking RD address in should not be equal to 0. So this only allows the write operation for the rest of the registers except X0 register. Okay. So if the condition is true, then I'm writing the RD underscore in to the register file at the address location at the address underscore in. That completes the write operation. Okay. And coming to the read operation, if you look at this asynchronous read. So this is the RS1 out data. This read operation happens based on the condition the forward output enable is high. That means that time the bypass can be enabled and RD in will be bypassed directly to the RS1 out rather being read from the register file with respect to RS1 address in. Similarly, the same logic I have applied for RS2 out as well. Now, what is this forward output enable logic? You can see here. We have used here a continuous concurrent process to calculate forward output enable. Whenever the RS1 address and RD address in are equal and it is a write operation during that time forward output enable will be asserted else it will be zero. All right. The same logic I have applied for forward output to enable. So this is how we have to design the RTL code for the integer file. All right. Now let's check the test bench code. Here is a test bench code. In the module, we need to declare the relevant reg variables for driving values to the duty input ports. And we have to declare the wire types for reading the values from the duty output ports. Then we need to instantiate the design as shown over here. You can either use order based or name based mapping. Then I have declared multiple tasks for different purposes. Like here the task initialize is used for initializing inputs to zero. 
this is a clock generation logic where I have initialized the clock to zero and then using a forever loop the clock toggles. We also have a reset task where I'm setting the reset and then after some time I'm resetting the same. Then we have a stimulus write task followed by a read task. Stimulus write task is basically for the write operation and this task I have passed here three input arguments like I have declared here three input arguments. At negative of the clock, I'm assigning the arguments to the relevant variables like rd, addr, I'm assigning to read address in, rd to rd underscore in, write enable to write enable in. Similarly, I have declared a read stimulus task where I'm declared three arguments over here. At negative of clock, I'm assigning rs1 addr to rs1 address in, rs2 addr to rs2 address in, write enable to write enable in. And finally, we are going to call the task inside this initial process. The first task which I'm going to call is initialize task followed by the reset. And after that, I have performed two write operations. So I have called the stimulus write task and I'm passing the values here. So I've currently passed 5 tick D5, then 1 and 30. So basically 5 is the destination address, and write enable is kept as 1, and 30 is the data to be written. Similarly, for the next write, I'm passing the address to be 6 with write enable still maintained as 1 and the new data to be written is 50. After that, there is a read operation by calling the stimulus read task and I'm passing the address 6. You can see here, that is RS1 address is 6, RS2 address is 5 because these are locations which I have written to and I'm making write enable 0. So this is going to perform a read operation and the data will be updated in the UT output. And concurrently, we are having a dollar monitor which is called in the initial process, which is used to monitor the changes in the variables you can see in the argument list. All right, so this is all about how you can develop the Verilog test bench for the integer file. Now, let's do the simulation process followed by synthesis and observe the outputs.